Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Neil Krohn, and I'm the director of field engineering for the Americas. And today we're going to talk about a concept car that we built here at TSPG for the Convergence Show and soon to be shipped to Electronica. So let's start at the back end of the uh, vehicle where uh, the engine sits. So this engine is a very unique engine. It is uh, an acrylic engine that was designed to display the concept of engine control with our latest silicon. Uh, the genesis of this machine is actually that of an air conditioning, an air compressor, and a, uh, we built the block out of acrylic, and it's an external combustion engine that runs on compressed air. The valves, however, are controlled by the same microprocessor that controls a real engine, and the silicon that controls the solenoids is the same silicon that we'll be using to control spark plugs and injectors. So in every sense, this is a real engine controller. The devices that uh, control the engine are our PowerPC product, and it's an MPC5534, and then also the analog device that controls the solenoids is an MC33810. And that device, like I said, controls spark plugs and injectors. What I'm going to do now is do a short demonstration of this engine actually running. So for just fun, we're going to... Uh, rope start it. Actually, with software control, we could dead start the engine, run it forward or backward, four cycle it or two cycle it. But just for the drama, we'll rope start it. And like a real engine, we have full control of both advanced and retard, and then throttle control. As you can see, we can get this engine to run very, very, very slowly. Or speed it up to a fast idle. Zoom up to the next level here, you'll see a, uh, a body controller that controls all of our lighting. And this body controller, as all body controllers are, is connected to the LIN bus. And we have various devices that support various different loads on that body controller. And some of the loads, as you see it when we go around the front of the vehicle, are 100 watts. Some of them are 55 watts, which represent actual automotive lighting loads. Continuing the technology tour of this vehicle, uh, every engine needs to be cooled, and this is an example of how you can control the speed of the fan variably by PWM, and that typically involves switching losses and a lot of power. If you notice that one device there, this is an evaluation board. The rest of the devices are not being used, but this single device right here is controlling the fan, and maybe you can even hear it when I spin it up. So a lot of power to do that, and this device does that very efficiently. It's a 4 milliohm device that uh, will run actually over a network, too, so you can very easily control it from a uh, powertrain controller. Okay, so from the rear of the vehicle, we looked at the body controller. Now from the business end of that body controller, you can see the large 100-watt lamps up here, 55-watt lights on the sides. So what I'm going to do is over a LIN network, I'm going to send a command to that body controller to turn on the lights, and there's a processor on the body controller that will actually run a script for us. So you can see that the, under software control, we can do basically anything we want with the lights, including dimming. We can do diagnostics on those lights to tell if they're on or off. In a real vehicle situation, you could actually turn on other lights if you lost a lamp. Uh, you could turn on a cornering light in place of a turn signal, for example, to, to remain safe until you got home. The ability to bring your audio and video entertainment into a vehicle is becoming more important with customers, especially the younger generation. And what we're demonstrating here is a uh, radio or a head end of uh, a digital playback device that will basically take any kind of digital media. If you look on the bottom right of the picture, you'll notice there's a flash stick plugged into this radio where the music's coming off of. The screen right now is blank. However, we could just as easily put a movie up on that display. So the output of this device is an optical link that connects to a 50-watt dual-channel Class D amplifier that's in the front of the vehicle. 
The microprocessor that controlled that head unit was called an Amadeus part. It's called it's a cold it comes from the cold fire family and it's doing all of the MP3 and MP4 decompression and also driving the display. So we're now looking at a 50 watt per channel dual channel class D amplifier. Excellent quality sound, very small size and obviously very low heat. Okay, the instrument cluster is demonstrating our latest 16-bit microprocessor that comes from our HC12 family. This is an HZ512 device, and on this device we have an X gate, which is a coprocessor, and a peripheral that allows us to directly drive color LCD displays. As the requirements from customers and vehicles to have more graphics, this device saves tremendous amount of system cost in implementing an instrument cluster with color graphics. Well, if you have a, a sand buggy and you're out across the desert, I think your life would uh, certainly depend on navigation, and we add a little twist to that navigation in the form of 3D navigation. What you're seeing here is a bird's eye view of the vehicle, and obviously if you're in a desert and dealing with all kinds of crevasses and canyons, you wouldn't want to come up over a rise and find out that you had no earth left under you. So this device is demonstrating with our 5200 microprocessor and a development system that allows customers to develop these kinds of systems in a vehicle along with a Wind Rivers operating system and a 3D view software package that takes GPS data, the GPS database, and basically projects you above the vehicle in real time. So that's what you're seeing here. Uh, real-time execution of a GPS database with you being projected into a bird's eye view. All right, so the next system we're going to discuss is the HVAC system, and there are two, two portions of this. One is the speed control for the blower motor, and that's controlled by this button showing the fan symbol, the plus and minus. So right now I'm going to increase the speed of the fan, and by holding it, it continues to increase, or you can move up in presses, and then I'm now going to decrease the speed of the fan, and I'm going to bring it to a stop. Okay, so it's now stopped. The next control that you have is the temperature control, and the plus moves the blend doors in one direction, and the minus moves the blend doors in another direction for as long as you have the button depressed. Okay, the final system that we're going to uh, review today is also a very critical system on a vehicle, even more important on a sand buggy, is uh, you don't want to uh, exceed some critical angle where you might find yourself on your head. So what we have here is a three-axis low-G accelerometer that is communicating to this tablet PC over Zigbee. And uh, if you take a look here, you'll notice that as I move the vehicle in three-dimensional space, the tablet PC is tracking me. So obviously this could be tied into a vehicle stability system and I could uh, have a, uh, a system that maintains the uh, situational awareness of the vehicle. So